what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel uh it's been a very busy week for myself uh putting close to 70 hours at my regular job um still trying to do work around here on the cars and also trying to open a new uh drop shipping store so that i can start selling merch um sell shirts hats uh and then i sell all kinds of other tech gadgets and stuff just trending products so that i can help build the business but uh doing all that set up a new uh business account on facebook so if you get a chance uh i have a link to my shop and to my facebook page down in the description uh if you would just check them out uh give me a like and a follow on facebook and uh i'm working on some t-shirt designs right now um trying to do all this stuff by myself and it's taking a little bit of time but i'm hoping to have some uh, t-shirt designs ready to go probably about two or three weeks and then uh well we'll see how it goes I know, i'm not expecting much from it but I'm trying to trying to start creating multiple revenue streams because uh, i'd like to start building some more interesting projects and i'd actually like to uh eventually get to the point where i don't have to work my regular job and i can make enough money doing other stuff to compensate for it but i make a pretty good salary so it's gonna be hard to uh compensate that without doing a lot of extra stuff so uh i'm gonna keep plugging away but in the last video you saw where i was test fitting the floor um now i'm gonna start cutting the veloster floor up and sectioning it up so that i can start fitting it into the firewall on the genesis floor so let's check out what i'm gonna do all right so like i said in the last video i'm planning on cutting it right across here roughly i'm gonna flip it over and look at the seam underneath and that's going to determine where i cut it but i'm cutting frame rails and everything i'm going to cut behind the seam so that i can come back through and drill all the spot welds out for the seam but right now i'm just going to rough cut it so that i can get a lot of this material out of my way but i'm going to clean all this stuff off the floor get the leaves and everything off of it get all my bolts and nuts and everything picked up and then i'm gonna start cutting the floor all right guys now that i've got the floor cleared off and i've got it standing up on its end what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna chop right behind this seam right behind that seam and i'm gonna try and keep it up here i don't know if i'm gonna be able to go that far back because i don't want to hit the abs module or the airbag module but i mean i may just unbolt it and cut through it i don't know essentially what i'm using off the veloster so this piece right here is essentially what i'm using so now what i'm gonna do more than likely i don't know yet what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna separate these beams and get them out i may just cut them off with the saws on just trim all this shit out and then uh because I'm using the center tunnel and all that shit out of the out of the Genesis. So I want to leave this support beam in here to hold the, everything together. And I want to leave this uncut until I get the Genesis fit better. And then I'll section everything in. But I want to see if the frame rails are going to fit. Because I'm, I'm obviously I'm going to have to take this stuff off. It doesn't look like there's anything in my way over here except for maybe these. I may have to cut those off. I don't know, but my main objective is to get this small enough to where I can test fit it onto the floor over there and then see where we can go from there. But I'll keep plugging away and I'll show you my progress as I go.
All right. Well, there's that. I don't know that I want to cut too much structure out of here, though. Fuck it. You only live once, right? That took a little longer than I thought. All right, one more side. Man, that was a pain in the ass. Ugh. All right. Making progress, making progress. All right, now that I've cut all the center out of the bottom of the firewall, I was looking at, take, I was taking measurements between here and there, and uh, it looks like what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to like cut this arm like across here or maybe even back here and weld those uprights or those frame rails to the outside of this and like overlap it or i may have to cut some of this off and and weld this to the side of the other frame rail but these frame rails are back here right in the damn dead center of where those frame rails go so um yeah i'm gonna have to rethink what i'm doing um but i'm gonna go ahead and pull these off pull the motor mount off and uh start getting this thing ready to start fitting the rails to this and fitting this to the firewall. So I think honestly, I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up right here along through here and down across this seam that goes through here and clean this seam up so that I can take this plate off. I'm gonna do it on both sides. I'm gonna take that off and then, yeah. I think I'm gonna take that off so that I can expose this beam and then I can figure out what I need to do as far as right here, matching this up with that. What's up everybody? So it's the next day. Uh, I got the center of the tunnel cut out. Um, I've got just the front of the firewall. I'm, I moved the front subframe away from the car. I'm gonna test fit the, sub, the subframe to the front half of the Veloster frame and see where everything lines up, see if I've got enough room with the firewall for the engine to fit without hitting anything. And then uh, that'll determine whether or where I can go with the firewall on the uh, Veloster itself. As long as I can get the subframe to fit inside of the frame rails um, from front to back, I'm not worried about side to side because that's what the frame rails from the uh, Genesis are for. But as long as they'll fit in between front to back, that way I know my front bumper will still fit and my radiator and all that. So uh, I'm gonna flip it around and show you what I'm working on. So I've got the entire front part of the floor cut off. I've got the bottom section of the floor cut out. And what I'm essentially trying to do is I need to make sure that when the center of this engine mount bolt is measured exactly i don't remember what it is it's either 11 or 13 inches i have to remember where it is but it has to be it has to fit um in between the firewall 
from so from the front of the firewall to the center of that bolt has to be either 11 or 13 inches i have to remeasure re it to make sure and uh, as long as it fits behind here then i'll be good um and if it's further than that if it's maybe um 14 or 15 inches then i won't have to worry about it but i don't think that's going to be the case i think this thing's barely going to fit so i'm going to measure it out and see what happens all right so now the fun part i'm going to try and fit this on top of the chassis Probably gonna have to go from the other side. Uh, yeah, I don't have my crane up here. It's in the back for the for the Lexus. So I'm gonna regroup and get this thing from the back. Come on, bitch. I was hoping I had it high enough to where it wouldn't hit the shocks, but it's right on top of the damn shock. So, this may prove to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. Because that shock is totally freaking shit. I may have to move the shock towers forward on this. I guess I need to take the struts off, in, or the, yeah, the struts in order to tam, do this. So, I guess I'm gonna take the struts off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take struts off so I can then make all this work. All right, let's try this again. That's essentially as far forward as that thing can uh, go and still fit the front bumper. So, oh, let's 
let's see what happens. Okay, so based off my measurements off of the motor, going from the center of the motor mount to the furthest point back on that is immovable, which is the cast aluminum uh, water neck on the back. That's uh, 12 inches exactly, or not exactly, but 12 inches, give or take, maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. But that should put where I have to have a minimum clearance between the center of this nut and the firewall of the same spacing. So, uh, I'm not going to be able to do this while I'm recording. Uh, let me set up my tape measure and then I'll pick back up. All right, so now you can see 15 inches to the center from the main firewall. From here, it's 13 inches, and that's the piece that's sticking out the most on that firewall. So hopefully, I can make this work uh, pretty, pretty uh, straightforward. Now, as you can see, the subframe for the Genesis is just barely sitting on the upper or on the frame supports for the Veloster. So that's the reason why I have to use the front frame rails that I've got right there. That's the reason I have to use both of those front frame rails and the good majority of that floor is because I need the mounts for the subframe. Um, plus I need the tunnel for the transmission and all that good stuff. So yeah, I think this might actually work. Um, my other concern is height and that's from where the subframe mounts on here to where the top of the shock tower is on the Veloster. I need to make sure that I get that height, uh, correct as well. So yeah. Fun. All right. Now that I've test fit, I've got measurements that I need to measure and whatnot. Um, I'm going to put this back into the car. Um, and now in hindsight, I probably should have left this in the car and just cut it up like this when I first took it apart, but it is what it is. Uh, it's not anything major. It's just a lot of welding that I got to do to put it back in, but I'm going to put this piece back in. Then I'm going to finish cutting the firewall out where I need to cut it because I don't want to lose this structural support right here until I get it welded back into the car. Once I get it welded back into the car, then I can chop the rest of this out where I need to. Now I'm gonna have to mess with the shock towers. They are gonna have to come forward an inch, but what I think I'm gonna do is, because the upper diameter on this one is a smaller diameter, I'm able to shift it forward an inch. So what I think I'm gonna do is weld these plates in to these shock towers, just an inch forward. Um, and I'll play around with that when I actually get to that point. But for right now, I'm gonna put this front end back into the Veloster. All right, everybody. So I've went ahead and put the uh, front firewall and frame fr uh, supports on the back onto the Veloster. Um, I haven't welded anything together yet, but uh, I just wanted to make sure everything was going to pop right back together. And that's the advantage of how I took this apart is what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put bolts through here and bolt this thing together in multiple places. And then I'll weld a spot pull a bolt weld where that bolt was pull that and pull another bolt and i'll just keep doing that as i as i weld everything back together but i got to pull it back apart so that i can i want to change out the uh shock tower caps um what i'm more than likely going to do is i'm going to cut these out and i'm going to cut them out all the way around this edge right here and then on the veloster chassis i'm going to cut it out across the top once I figure out where I need to position it because I need to move it forward. So as long as I can get this bolt inside of this arm right here, and if I gotta modify this or whatever, I'll do whatever I gotta do to get it sitting where I need to sit it. And uh, that way I can bolt the shock back in the way that it needs to be bolted in. I may have to trim this back edge off. I may have to extend this, I may have to like on the Veloster, not trim as far in on that one and trim it back a little bit because it, the shock tower sits out and forward. So that's the that's the gist of what I'm getting ready to do. So I'm going to pull this chassis. I'm going to pull the front end back out, clean up where I need to weld it, 
put it back in, bolt everything together, weld all my spot welds back in, and then I'll wind up knocking these off, taking the motor mount out, and uh, I'll have that done before I get that welded in. And then once I get that set in there, then I can start cutting the center out of here and then sectioning these frame rails to get these frame rails to sit over top of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to um, cut this floor to where I can lay this floor directly on top of it. So what I'm hoping to be able to do is to take this floor and cut it essentially right here and then up wherever I need to cut it into here and then cut across or I may even leave it as a solid piece until I get it in the car. And then I'll just fold this around until I get it to meet up with the other firewall and then my transmission tunnel will all be there. And then I can get the frame rails because what I think I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm pretty sure that this is going to be removed to the outside of the frame rail. So it's basically gonna come in here at like a 45 and I'm gonna have to overlap that other frame rail on top of here to get the right clearance. But I think I've got it all planned out pretty well. Uh, again, I wish I wouldn't have, uh, at this point I'm wishing I wouldn't have removed this. It did make it easier to do some things. And I mean, in all honesty, I had to do what I did to figure this out. Um, now that I know what I'm doing, I would never do it that way again. I would just cut it like it is and then section that floor. I would still do that floor the same way that I did it, but I wouldn't have done the Veloster floor the same way that I did it. But you live and you learn. I'll be able to weld it right back into place because of how I took it apart. And all my seams are gonna line right back up. I just put a, like I said, put a series of bolts in here, put a series of bolts in here, and I'll just remove a bolt, weld it. Remove a bolt, weld it. And I'll just keep doing that throughout. And then when I get into the interior, when I get into in here welding all this in, what I'll more than likely wind up doing is like through here, I can still put bolts all the way to like right here, I think is the last bolt. I might be able to put another one in right there. But then when I get down into here, what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm gonna run some self-tapping screws in there to pull the sheet metal in and that'll pull the two panels together, I'll weld it, and then I'll remove the screw, and then I'll weld over top of where the screw was. And I'm gonna do that all along here, but I have to get my grinder in here, and I have to clean up this surface rust from the rain and the moisture. Um, it's just surface rust. I mean, most of it, it comes off on your freaking hands. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna clean all those seams up so that I can weld all this back together and do seam sealer on it again. And now as soon as I weld it together, I'm gonna put seam sealer on it and, and get it going. So when I start the next video, uh, the chances are pretty high that the uh, front end is actually gonna be welded back into the Veloster. I don't think I'm gonna record that uh, just cause it'll slow me down so much cause there's so many places that I have to weld. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wind up getting this entire front end welded back in. I'm gonna weld my outside frame supports for the for the outside of the fenders and get all that squared away. And then I'll start, uh, when I pick up the video, it'll be when I start making cuts again. But I'm, gonna, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna cover any of me welding any of this back in. I might show like where I'm, how I have it all bolted in. And then I'm, I might show a couple tacks, but I'm not gonna record the whole thing because it's just gonna slow me down. So I hope y'all understand. But that's the game plan for now. Um, making a little bit of progress. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Um, we still have really cold days here and there, but uh, it's been in the 60s here lately. So uh, it drops down to 30 overnight, but it's been 50, 60 in the afternoon. So um, hopefully I can continue up at this pace and uh, get this thing rocking and rolling. If I can get the frame rails fit and the floor fit, uh, once that's done, I can put the motor in it and leave the motor in it. And then all I got to do is the rear axle. Um, now, once I get the whole car running, I'll tear it completely apart so that I can repaint it. But I want to get it completely assembled, running and driving to make sure everything's going to work before I tear it apart and paint the whole thing. So it is what it is. Um, like always, uh, really appreciate everybody checking out the uh, build. And uh, 
thanks for uh, coming here and uh, being part of the uh, growing family here at Shade Tree uh, Street Cars. Um, like always, if you like what you saw in this video or if you're just uh, interested in the build and want to have other people see it, uh, give me a like, a comment, share, subscribe. Uh, let your friends see what I'm doing and I'll catch you in the next video. Y'all have a great one.